Welcome to our first lesson, which gives an overview of sequential programming concepts. In this lesson, you'll understand the meaning of key concepts that are associated with sequential programming. Mastering these concepts is essential before trying to learn the more advanced concurrency and parallelism programming concepts we'll cover later. You'll also have a chance to recognize the pros and cons of sequential programming. Overcoming these cons motivates our upcoming focus on concurrent and parallel programming techniques for the Java and Android platforms. So let's begin with an overview of sequential programming. Sequential programming is a form of computing that executes the same sequence of instructions and always produces the same results. In other words, execution is deterministic. In particular, given a certain input, the same input will always be produced in the same order. For example, consider a drive through lane in a fast food restaurant. The order in which the people receive their food is the same order that they place their requests. The deterministic behavior of sequential programming assumes no deliberate use of randomness, of course. See upcoming lessons in the Java Fork Join framework for coverage of how randomness is applied in concurrent and parallel programs. Sequential programs have two key characteristics. First, the textual order of statements specifies their order of execution. Consider, for example, the get method in the ArrayList class from the Java Collections framework. Chaos and insanity will occur in this get method implementation if the range check method is not called before the element data method. Second characteristic of sequential programs is that successive statements must execute without any temporal overlap that's visible to programs or programmers. For example, consider this code sequence where we're assigning A the value of B plus C and D the value of E minus A. Clearly, the value of A must be assigned before the value of D is assigned. Otherwise, we'll get very strange results. However, under the hood, lower layers in the solution stack, which of course includes hardware and software, can reorder instructions transparently, as long as it's not visible to the programs or programmers. For example, out of order execution can be used to avoid pipeline stalls that delay instruction execution, sometimes known as bubbles in a pipeline as shown here. See the links at the bottom of the slide for more information about out of order execution and pipeline stalls. Here's the original code that could be generated at the assembly level that includes stalls. As you can see here, loading the value of memory location C into register C will have a stall because it takes one clock cycle in order to be able to get a load or a store. Therefore, there'll have to be a stall that's included as a bubble in the pipeline. Likewise, loading the value of memory location E into register E will also incur a stall before we can do a subtraction using that because of the load taking one cycle. In contrast, if we rearrange the instructions, which would be something that could be done, for example, by an assembly language optimizer, then what we see here is that we can reorder things so that the load of register E from variable E in memory takes place after loading C into register C. And therefore, we're able to be able to do a better job of executing with no pipeline stalls, thereby getting less overhead involved for running these instructions. This is a good example of instruction scheduling. But keep in mind, all of these things, all these reorderings must be done transparently to programs and programmers. Now that we've talked a little bit about the concepts in sequential programming, let's go ahead and evaluate the pros and cons of this technique. We'll start out with the pros or the benefits. The most obvious benefit of sequential programs is that they're relatively easy to program and relatively easy to debug versus non-sequential programs, say concurrent and parallel programs. In particular, sequential programs are typically intuitive since the program matches the steps that are expressed in algorithms. For example, if we take a look at the selection sort that's shown here, this algorithm could be understood by reading it as it's written without having to worry about any types of concurrency or synchronization surprises. In particular, there are no issues with atomicity, there are no issues with visibility, there are no issues with ordering of instructions in multi-core caches and so on and so forth. If you're curious about some of these topics, which we'll cover later, take a look at the link at the bottom of the slide. Another benefit or pro of sequential programming is that the behavior in the debugger reflects the actual program behavior quite deliberately and quite precisely. Conversely, the behavior of non-sequential programs, in other words, concurrent and parallel programs, 
often differ when run in a debugger versus being run in the wild or at runtime in a customer deployment. And of course, these differences stem from perturbations in timing that occur in these different execution contexts. So when you set breakpoints and run in a debugger and your program is non-sequential, then you may have different timing relationships because the threads are running in a different way than they might run if you were not in the debugger. And that causes all kinds of headaches. So sequential programs are typically easier to debug. Another benefit of sequential programming is that the deterministic execution order that they embody simplifies reasoning about and assuring the behavior of the program. This is especially important for safety critical cyber physical systems. And these are typically systems where the right answer delivered too late becomes the wrong answer. So think about things like self-driving cars or power grids or medical devices, air traffic control systems, airplanes, and so on and so forth. Of course, not everything is unicorns and rainbows. So there are also some cons of sequential programming. Most importantly, of course, is you can't leverage the parallelism that's available in modern multi-core systems where you have lots of cores at your disposal. As a consequence, the performance of a sequential program may suffer relative to an equivalent concurrent and or parallel program. So with more cores, you can take advantage of parallel and concurrent techniques in order to get better throughput, better scalability, and lower latency, as we'll talk about in much more detail later. Another downside or con with sequential programming is it's often hard to make sequential programs be responsive to multiple input and output sources and syncs. These include things like mouse movements, mouse clicks, touch events, GPS location signals, network connection data, asynchronous storage, read and write completions, and so on and so forth. And trying to keep those things managed in a single thread is often difficult and often leads to the dreaded spinning pinwheel or the dreaded hourglass of death that you may have seen in older systems that were single threaded. Moreover, having only a single thread of control complicates the structure of sequential programs with respect to blocking operations. If you only have one thread and that thread blocks waiting for input or output, then everything else in the program will come to a screeching halt. And getting around this often requires you to do very convoluted event-driven programming techniques that are a little bit unwieldy and lead to various inherent and accidental complexities that we'll talk about later. Overcoming these cons motivates all the coverage on concurrent and parallel programming topics that we'll be looking at henceforth in these other lessons that'll come up shortly. So that's the end of our overview of sequential programming concepts. And now we can move on to the coverage of concurrency and parallelism, which is the focus of this course.